I'm Cliff, and this is my garage. Today, we're going to see how to remove the tail lights from a second generation Porsche Cayman 987. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the garage, and if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. This is my 2012 Porsche Cayman S. I recently did a video on tinting the taillights on the Cayman and also swapping in some aftermarket taillights. Several people asked me to show exactly how you remove the taillights on the Cayman because they're planning to do it, I guess, and they want to know how. I also own a first-generation Porsche Cayman, the 987 or the 987.1, which has a slightly different taillight that removes in a slightly different way. If you're interested in how to remove a first-generation 987 Cayman taillight, check out the suggested video link up in this corner here. To remove the Cayman taillight, we have to access three nuts on the back of the taillight. Luckily, this is pretty easy by just opening up the back of the Cayman and you have access to, sort of, the back of the taillight. I'm going to move the camera into this trunk area and that way you can get a clear view of what I'm doing. We need to start off by removing this plastic shroud. The, uh, the bolts or the nuts that we need to remove are behind it. And we do that with this little knob here. You turn it 90 degrees and it pops it loose. And then reach under here and just pull this out. And the whole thing will come out. A couple things to look out for is these little plastic gizmos that fit onto these prongs. They tend to pop off and go flying. Just make sure that you keep track of those and make sure they're still there. The other thing to be aware of is this prong on the other end of it, it needs to go up into that hole right there. And it also has a little uh, plastic thing that has a tendency to pop out. So just be aware of that. And when putting it back in, it's a little fiddly, but you need to get this prong thing back into that hole. In fact, let me just show you. Uh, that works. Just kind of guide it in there, and then you're going to push it into place, and then you're going to push this back in. And sometimes it's really hard to get it to go, and what will happen is you've got this thing rotated down too low. It needs to go further up, like in there, and then this will just pop right back into place. Get this in, turn it. Oop. Yep. There, turn it 90 degrees and now it's locked in place. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Ah, there goes one flying there. And just set the shroud aside. Next, we have to remove this carpeted piece. You really technically don't have to, but it makes your life quite a bit easier. It sits in a little groove molded into this base piece here. And also notice up here on the top, it's tucked in behind this little metal um, lip. When you're reinstalling it, make sure you get it back behind that metal lip. This carpeted piece can be kind of a pain to get out of here. I find the easiest way to do it is to kind of start here at this corner and get your fingers underneath it. And then just go along and work it up out of that groove and then pull it down and it comes back out. To reinstall it, you just kind of reverse that process, making sure you get this in here tucked in well, and of course, making sure you put the, uh, the top behind that metal lip. Now we have full access to the back of the taillight. Let's start off by removing the wiring harness connector. For me, the trickiest part about removing the taillights for the first time was figuring out how this connector comes apart. Um, just use a little tiny screwdriver or even your fingernail and you want to hook this little tab right there. Get your fingernail or this screwdriver right in there and just pull straight back. You'll hear a little click and the connector pops right off. Now find these three nuts, one, two. The third one is kind of above this one up here to the at the end 
of this metal opening. You might even be able to see it from your angle, maybe a little bit. In order to take them off, you're going to need an eight millimeter something. Now you can use a regular socket wrench. If you do that, make sure you get a deep socket or at least a deeper socket, not a real shallow one. Because if you go with a shallow one, the end of that stud is going to hit the inside back of the socket and you won't be able to reach the nut. Another thing you can use, you can use a regular end wrench, which is a little bit easier. Um, you can also use a, uh, good Lord, what's this called? a nut driver to get it off, but if you do, you're going to have the same problem unless you get a nut driver that has a hollow shaft. So you can use any of those, but what I find the easiest to use is one of these close ratchet end wrenches. Um, these make it really easy. These are close ratchet, which means that there, it only takes a little tiny movement, like only five degrees to back up to the next tooth. A typical ratchet, you're going to have to back up like 25 or 30 degrees to get to the next tooth. This, that makes these really nice to use in very tight places. And this is kind of a tight place. So we just put, oh, no, we've got to go the right way to take it off. Put it on there, break it loose, and then you can remove it with your fingers. You know, just uh, going back to these uh, close quarters ratchets, or they go by a variety of different names. Um, these things are really great. They're relatively inexpensive, and if you'd like your own set, I'll put a link to the ones that I use down in the description below the video. Once you break them loose, you can just remove them with your fingers. Um, there's a couple things to keep in mind about when you're removing these nuts. One is that be really careful when you're taking them off because there's a hole here and they love to jump into that hole if you drop these things. So be really careful. The other thing, and it might be kind of hard to see, is that this, there is a captive washer on here. I really can't hold it right. And this, um, the washer turns independently of the nut. Now, so if you're trying to take it off with your fingers, make sure that you're actually grabbing the nut itself, and you're not just grabbing and spinning the washer, because you'll be here for a really long time if that's what you're doing. So remove the second nut. Again, I got the wrench on the wrong way. Break it loose. This is where you really need to be careful, because if you drop this or the third one, that hole is right below them. Just kind of keeping some back pressure on them until I feel it. Uh, click from the slipping past the threads and then the final one way up in here come on okay. once the nuts are off just push right here on this foam piece and the light comes right out. Okay, that's all there is to it. Once you know a couple little tricks, it's pretty simple. Now, before you go, go down there, find that thumbs up button and give it a click. It sure helps me out a lot with YouTube's algorithms for people searching for videos. Also, find that big red subscribe button and give that a click. And don't forget, if you want to keep up with everything going on here in the garage, check or click on the bell icon. That turns on notifications for this channel, and YouTube will let you know every time that I post something new from here in Cliff's Garage. I'll see you next time.